So the metabolism, the metabolism in your body performs four essential functions for your cells. Therefore, it's performing these functions for your tissues and your organs, okay? So this all happens at the level of the cell. Energy is created at the level of the cell. So the number one function of metabolism is to create energy in the body. It basically takes food and breaks it down and creates energy in the form of ATP. That's called adenosine triphosphate, but that's the last time I'm gonna say that word, okay? ATP is the currency, the main currency of energy in your body. So the goal is to break down foods and to create ATP. That's one of the things the metabolism does. It creates energy. Now, when it's creating energy in that way, it's utilizing a process called catabolism. Okay, so one, metabolism is creating energy. Two, catabolism. Okay? Now, catabolism is literally breaking down foods into smaller molecules. Okay? So, catabolism is converting macronutrients. It's taking fat, protein, and sugar, aka carbohydrates, it's taking fat, protein, and sugar, breaking it down into simpler structures. That is catabolism, breaking down. Catabolism, breaking down. Catabolism, breaking down. Remember that. Okay? So, it's converting these fat, proteins, and carbohydrates into actual fatty acids amino acids and glucose, okay? Fatty acids, amino acids, and glucose. So these, fat is getting converted to fatty acids. Protein is getting broken down to amino acids. Carbohydrates getting broken down into glucose, okay? So, which are then burned for energy when the body is in a catabolic state. The third thing is anabolism, okay? Anabolism is repairing or building tissues. Okay, repairing or building tissues. So catabolism, breaking down. Anabolism, building up. Catabolism, breaking down. Anabolism, building up. Okay, I want you to remember that. So it's converting those simpler structures that we talked about, those fatty acids, those amino acids, the glucose, and it's creating these things called macromolecules, which are like nucleotides and lipids and new proteins. Okay, so it's literally breaking these things apart and building up, taking these single amino acids and rebuilding them into new proteins, new cells, new tissue, new muscle. Okay, so that is anabolism. So hence the idea of like bodybuilders taking anabolic steroids, anabolic anabolism, anabolic steroids. They're taking steroids to build new tissue, to build new muscle, right? Okay, so the fourth thing we'll talk about is that, I mean, I guess we'll just say, I'm not really gonna touch on this, okay? But like the fourth thing in, in, in the basic nutshell is cellular functions. Like human metabolism is responsible for making a whole lot of cellular functions happen. Now, to give you guys a little background story, I am a certified nutritional therapist. Some people are like, huh, what's that, right? The basic outline of becoming a nutritional therapist is studying the way that food impacts your genetic expression and biochemistry. So I can assure you right now, the number one factor of your genetic expression, how your genes literally express themselves, first of all, your genes can't turn themselves on and off. They rely on the environment to do that. This is a very new field of study. The first human genome was only mapped in 2003. That's how new this is, okay? So really, nobody is an expert at this. Like the top expert on the human genome kind of knows some stuff. Like, I believe the statistic is we know what 3% of human DNA actually does. The other 97%, we call it junk DNA because we just don't know, okay? But we know that the environment is what switches genes on and off. That's what nutritional therapists study, how food impacts your genetic expression and your biochemistry. So we can talk about epigenetics later if I have time, but I gotta hammer more of this out first. We're Simply put, the human metabolism breaks down food and uses it as energy for all the different cellular functions in the body. And oddly enough, it breaks down things to, create, to make cellular functions happen, and these are cellular functions. Catabolism and anabolism. These are all cellular functions. So it's this constant recycling process. Recycling, using, burning, creating energy, storing energy, constant spin, right? So these, re these reactions are constantly building things up and breaking things down. So metabolism is basically the balance of anabolism and catabolism. It's the balance, right? So let me see if I can, uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of this real quick and 
screenshot it or something if you want it. Take a screenshot if you don't want to lose this. I only have so much, uh, well, let me see, maybe I can do it over here. Yeah, I can do that over here, okay. So here's what we're looking at. If we look at metabolism, and then we weigh this out, seesaw, like you're a little kid, right? So we look at metabolism as basically the balance, it's like a tug of war kind of, of anabolism and catabolism. Always breaking things down, building things up, breaking things down, building things up, breaking things down, building things up. That is human metabolism. Catabol I mean, human metabolism, catabolism and anabolism. Obviously, bullism, bullism, right? That's literally what metabolism is. It's the process of doing this, repairing and storing, breaking things down for energy, blah, blah, blah. Now, each and every macronutrient, fat, protein, and carbohydrates can be utilized for both of these processes, okay? Not just one or the other. All of your macronutrients can be utilized in all of these things. And what we're gonna talk about is how each and every macronutrient plays a role in anabolism and catabolism. We're gonna talk about both of them. And I'm gonna try to hammer through this. I'm gonna dig in deep into what this stuff is. Let me peek.